Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel for another bake. Today's bake is going to be pear and chocolate frangipan tart. This one's really really tasty and great little comfort food as well. So let me show you guys the ingredients list. 220 grams of soft unsalted butter, 220 grams of caster sugar, 175 grams of ground almonds, 4 free range eggs, 50 grams of plain flour plus extra for rolling out pastry. Around 150 grams of decent quality chocolate, at least 80% cocoa. 15 grams of flaked almonds. I've also got around two to three conference pears which have been peeled and sliced into eights with lemon juice. I have a seven by seven inch loose bottom pastry tin greased with butter and flour. And finally, one small tub of baking beans. Okay, so pear and chocolate tart is a really moist tart. It's lovely all with juicy pears and stuff, and the chocolate just gives it an extra edge. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got my sweet pastry here, what I've got in another video, so I'll leave a link in the description for that one. And I'm just gonna roll this out, and then we're gonna blind bake it, ready for the next pot. So with this sweet pastry, then we need to whack the oven on to about 160 degrees. And this has been left out for about one hour, just to warm up a little bit. So we're just gonna roll this out and a bit of flour into our tart case. Okay, I got my pastry here, and I got some flour and a rolling pin. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to work this a little bit, just to make it a little bit more pliable. Okay, only about 20 seconds really, just to help it out a little bit. Now you want to dust your surface with flour. And drop your pastry on top. Get your rolling pin all nice and floured up. And then you just want to roll this out, nice and slowly, not put much pressure on. To a nice, round, just under a pound coin kind of thickness. You just want to keep flipping it over, make sure there's flour underneath. Now give it a flip, dust the flour off the top, and roll again. Okay, so roll this out to the right thickness now, just over about 50p kind of size. So now we're going to put it on a rolling pin and drop it over our grease pastry case that we've got. So you just want to flour your rolling pin, and then you want to try to pick it up nice and gently, all in one go. And you want to roll on your rolling pin, a bit more flour on your pastry, on your back of your pastry as well. Nice and slowly. And roll it all the way up. Get your pastry case ready. And we'll do the exactly the opposite and roll it out again. I've actually got a knife now and just want to trim off quite a lot of the excess so it doesn't weigh it down too much. And it will kind of fall inside the pastry case a little bit, but we can patch it up a bit so it's fine. You want to chop all this away. This can be used for anything else you wanted to do. Save a little bit back for your pastry though. You can always make some like jam tart, something really nice with it. Or even do another one of these cases. Then you want to just drop it in. Okay, so mine kind of has cut off in the corner a little bit, but it's fine. So what you can do with this pastry is just go over it and overlap it a little bit. And it will kind of patch work a little bit. And then you won't really notice when you've got the French pan in anyway. You just want to put this in anyway. And then you want to pound it around all the corners nice and slowly. Without breaking, it is quite fragile. Just to try and make it a nice deep edge. Okay, this is pressed down all into the corner now, looking really nice. And if you notice, it gets a little bit of pastry around the outsides because it all seems to shrink a little bit. And then you kind of got it covered with the pastry bean on the outside. So we've got our baking beans here. I've actually got a piece of grease we've already cut to size. Just press it all around the corners. And you want to add your baking beans in. And now just make sure these are all pressed in the insides as well. Okay, this is looking pretty much perfect now. So now you want to whack into it for about 20 minutes and then we'll take the baking beans out and see how it's looking. Okay everyone, it's been about 20 minutes now so the pastry should be about done. So you just want to pull these baking beans off. So we've actually got our egg whites here that we use to actually make the pastry. So I've got a pastry brush and we're just going to brush this a little bit and then put it back into the oven just to give it a bit more colour for another five minutes really. This also helps to seem to seal the pastry case a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a crispier base. Okay, so I've just brushed this a little bit and I need to pop into the oven for about another five minutes just to get a bit more colour on it. Okay, this is in for about another five minutes just to get a bit more colour on it. Now we've actually got a decent knife here and we're just going to trim a bit of the excess pastry off. So you want to be nice and gentle and just try and see if we can scrape any of the pastry off the sides. Okay, so 
So you trim that down, that looks looking pretty much perfect. And you can always do this after the bake if you wanted to, it just makes it a little bit easier. So now actually I'm going to put this to one side and we'll work on the frangipan mix. Okay, so we've sorted the pastry case out for now. So now we're actually going to start on the frangipan. So we've got our butter and sugar here together and we're just going to cream them nicely together. I've actually got a Kenwood Chef here, which I'm going to be using, but you can definitely do this by hand. So we're just going to cream them together just until they're nice and pale. Okay, now you've got that sorted, now you want to whisk the eggs up a little bit. And I just want to slowly add the eggs back into the mix with a teaspoon of flour each time, just until it's nice and incorporated. Okay, so the frangipan is nearly done. So now we're actually going to put this on one side and we're actually going to melt the chocolate over some simmering water. Okay, we've got a pan of simmering water here. And it's about two inches full, so it doesn't hit the bottom of the bowl. And you just want to put this on and you just want to let it do it nice and slowly just until it's all nicely melted. Okay, now that's melted, now you want to take off the heat and just let it cool down a little bit. Okay, now we're going to work back on the frangipan mix, but first things first, we need to turn the oven down to about 140 degrees. So we've got our frangipan mix here now, so now we need to fold in the ground almonds to it. Right, so now this is all folded in, now you need to add your chocolate to the frangipan mix. I'll just swap to a bowl scraper here just to try and get all the chocolate out of the bowl because you want it all going in there. Now you can definitely do a different type of chocolate if you want to, maybe put some white chocolate in it, maybe put some like orange instead of pears, it be really nice. Okay, this is looking perfect now. So now you want to add your chocolate frangipan into your pastry case. Now you might even have a little bit of spare to do like a few more with your pastry if you wanted to, and it does save in the fridge for a few days. So you just want to spread this out all nice and evenly. Get it right in the corners as well. Just for a nice even layer. Okay, I've just swapped to a knife, just to make it a little bit easier. Just want to spread it all nice and evenly, all around the outsides as well. And now we're just going to put the pears on the top. Okay, so with the pears, I've took them out of the lemon juice and you want to try and put them to the side and try and do a bit of a fan. So you just want to do that to each one. About, about an inch thickness, maybe a little bit less, and go all the way around from the middle. Okay, that's the last one. Now you probably will have a few pairs left over, but you can always do a bigger pastry case if you wanted to. That's ready to go in now, and I just need to pop a few flaked almonds on the top. Okay, now we need to pop it into the oven for about 40 minutes and it will take a while with these pears being in where it seems to block the frangipan from cooking a little bit. Just, so just wait until it's nicely cooked in the middle and it'll be ready to go. Okay everyone, we're back. It's been about an hour and 20 now. It took a bit longer than we thought actually. Just to try and get that middle frangipan actually cooked. So let's have a quick check. Yeah, it's looking great. This is really, really tasty. Look like it's all decorated and stuff as well. So you just want to grab yourself a knife and just check it straight in the middle. And if it comes out clean, you're good to go. Yep, clean. So I'm dead happy with this thing guys, I love the presentation on it. I love the chocolate fringe pan idea as well. And those pears just give it really nice juicy freshness. So let me know in the comments then everybody how you got on with this recipe, any variations you did. You maybe did some like, orange flavoured chocolate or you can put oranges in the mix in the Maria right here. But that's it, then my chocolate pear fringe pan tart is done. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next bake. Fringe pan tart. This one's really, really tasty and proper comfort it as well. Comfort it in. And we're just going to brush them a little bit with this brusher. <laughs> so we've got our frangipan mix here now. Now we just need to fold this into the ground almonds. All the way around. Okay, so we've shorted the paper. Shorted. Okay, so we've shorted. <laughs>